What's going on guys? It's Mike with Sunny Slope Homestead. And today we're going to be going over the Kubota BX2380. I want to go over things that I had issues with it, what I like, what I dislike, uh, talk about the company a little bit, the finance things, all that stuff. Maybe this will help with somebody who's on the fence about going green, orange, red, blue, yellow, wherever it may be. So I hope this video helps. So stick around and let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is that mower deck. Now I'll link the video up above that shows me taking off this deck for somebody who's brand new to the tractor. How easy is it to take off that deck? Now that deck was really easy to take off. Now, the problem I had was getting it back on during my cutting season. So we put it on just recently and the problems I had was the front mounts. Now I did no adjustments to this mower. I literally got it from the factory, October, went through the winter. I pushed snow with it. I did yard work. I used the front end loader. When I went back to put on this deck, it gave me a lot of problems. Now, I know mower decks, they give everybody's problems. Everybody has problems with these things. And it's just one of the downsides of having a belly mower. This is something I wanna show you that I think Kubota could either change or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Mounts right here are what really gave me the problem because the access to them is really kind of tough and not easy to get to. Let's take a closer look. Now, as you can see, the pin goes in and then on the back side there is where your retaining clip sits. Now, I, I replaced them with cotter pins because the clips that they had back there, I don't know what they're called. It's not coming to mind right now, but they were kind of a pain to get back in. But you can see how this is all cupped in. Now, I know this is to protect this, but I think there's a better way that they can make this more accessible. Now, either way, with a, a quick detach system, system or something, I'm not sure. But this right here, this was a bear to deal with. Now, I decided to purchase the drive over deck. And reviews are horrible on this deck. I really didn't run into any issues. I think it's really easy to use. And it actually, I think it provides an excellent cut. I use this as a finish mower. This deck gives me a perfect cut and I was really surprised at how well it cut grass. And almost I would say on a professional mower level. Now granted the price tag of this tractor, you would hope you get a damn good cut out of it. And which I did. Now the supporting arms on the back of this deck, it's controlled by your three point in the back. So when you operate your three point in the back, lowers and raises, that goes down with it. Now this is an interesting thing about this. When you don't have this deck on, those arms, if you put them all the way up in that position, they tend to lock up there. So when you, when you don't have this deck on, you're running your uh, back uh, implements, your brackets down here don't float up and down. Now, I had to learn that by putting this deck on because I could not get those lower arms to come down whatsoever. I was like, what is going on? I literally had to go underneath there and take a little pry bar and pop them loose. But once I figured that out, man, she went on pretty easy. One thing I can say about Kubota is they listen to the consumer. They've always had a good reputation of taking their customer complaints and addressing them. And I'm gonna point a couple of those out. And I think it's pretty cool, the company, to actually take reviews and people's uh, woes about their product and make design changes in their next year's model. One of them being this front guard. I'm gonna show you. Some of the biggest complaints that I saw, they're not the biggest complaints, but one of the pains that people always had is when they said, when they opened their hood on this tractor or bonnet, depending on what country you're in, they would always hit this front guard. That can be a real pain in the butt when you're trying to maintenance your mower. And what they did was something very simple, very easy to fix and implement in their next design. And it was this. That's not too difficult, people. They noticed it and they addressed it. A real simple fix. And I think it's gonna go a long way with their customers. Now, let me show you one thing I don't like about this hood assembly. And I wish they would address it. So this is the hood release. It has a little arrow, says to point this way. And you start pulling on it. 
and it's not really it's not going anywhere people break this a lot because it's kind of it's kind of weird so let me show you how it works you have to pull up and pull out and then hood opens so kind of hope they change that or make it a little bit more user friendly because it's gotten me a few times i'm used to it now so it's not an issue but let me show you let me show you on this hood that i don't like okay so you have your you have your your panels right here right this is an all steel tractor there's no plastic on that that's an upside for me i like that because i've had the green ones and the plastic brakes but this is what i don't like these side panels they're not removable they're welded in place now you look at this look at the side room you have on that even with the panels on that's not that bad i can't complain too much about that here's the other side so you have plenty of room but man it'd be really nice if i could take that panel off and have even more access to underneath this engine bay now is that a big deal not really i could work around it but i thought it was something that was kind of odd that you know they would weld those panels in place I guess uh, I've never taken the hood off this tractor. Maybe it's really simple to take the hood off, but you know, who wants to take an entire hood off a tractor just to get a little bit more access to it? So it's kind of a complaint, but it's not that big of a deal. Another thing I want to go over is this is where your air intake's at. Now they have this screen here that I really like because it catches a lot of that big debris and it doesn't wind up getting sucked into your engine bay or clogging stuff up. And it's really simple to remove. Watch. You take the nut off here. Take a couple pins, or take it off the side here. And it comes right off. It's fairly simple. If you don't have a big old factory keychain like this or dealer keychain, it goes on even easier. So, when you're done using it, you can just blow this thing out. It snaps right back on. No problem at all. So, in your older models of this BX series, one thing that they changed is they took the operating controls from up here and they moved them down below. And they gave you a little armrest too. So it gives you a nice place to rest your arm and operate your, your front controls, your loader bucket, wherever you may what have you on the front of this tractor. So I'm telling you, if you mention it, they're gonna change it. Now I don't think they're gonna be putting anything crazy on here like a coffee warmer or anything like that, but man, what a simple fix. Take it up here put it down here so you can sit back and operate this without any issues now let me show you the downside of that what I found out the downside of having it right here is now your controls your valve body is underneath this fender it's not that big of a deal but I'm gonna show you what I had an issue with putting chains on this and it was kind of a big deal to me there it is guys you see the clearance of that protection plate guarding that valve body barely just have enough in there to make things work and it's really tight clearance now putting chains on these rear tires was a pain I did have a viewer say he deflates his tires just enough to make clearance to put his chains on that's an excellent idea and that's what I'm gonna be doing going forward she gets tight another thing I want to talk about is the roll bar on this thing some people don't use them some people do but when I bought this tractor and put it in my garage for the first time and you'll notice in that Mahindra video where I almost made a fatal mistake of not fatal but bad mistake of pulling it into the barn and and I could have ripped off my header board to my garage they shortened these down to still be useful in a rollover but you can fit them in a normal garage I thought that was pretty cool I have not put this down any other tractor this would have been the first thing that would come down and and I would probably never would have used it and the reason why I leave it up, because it's short and it fits underneath a lot of things. So to Kubota, that's a good change. You take people like me who bypass the safety device, they roll it down because they don't want to forget and destroy their garage back here on that header board. And you force us to leave them up. It's not an issue now. So I always leave it up and that makes me safer. They're looking out for me even when I'm not. So let's talk about tires guys. This is what they call is their industrial tire. It's a big, thick, hard tire. It's an eight ply and it's extremely rugged. 
I went with this option because I have a lot of little shoots and things like that and sticks that will puncture tires. Trust me, I found out in my UTU, those cheap four ply tires, seems like everything's always going through them. Even when you just run over a little stick, it punches through them. Now, most people will look at these and say, I cannot use, the, use these on my, my yard. I'm not, it's gonna tear, if they, look at the lugs on this thing, it looks like something on a skid loader, seriously. But I haven't ran into any issues with these tires using them on my grass. They don't, they bite, but as long as you're not hauling and you're pulling, so, I mean, if you're cutting grass, they're not gonna destroy your yard. So you're not gonna really tear up your yard. And these things are gonna give me a lot of use. And they're gonna get me out of some sticky situations if I get stuck in the mud. So that's why I didn't go with turf tires. So needless to say, if you're up in there about getting tires and you're worried about something like this tearing up your grass, let me show you my yard and you be the judge. Now you can tell, I don't have no big deep ruts. I don't have big old chunks of grass missing and stuff like that. Now, I will tell you, those tires come in handy when I'm going up that hill. They bite just enough to get me up that hill without slipping, but they don't tear the grass up. So if you're on the fence about those tires, that's my honest opinion. I don't think they're gonna cause you any harm. And this gives a really good finished cut. We're gonna cut the grass real quick. We'll time lapse that, or maybe not. I don't know yet. Depends on how I feel. I'll show you how well this thing cuts grass. There you have it folks that's a pretty good cut if you're worried about those tires they're not causing me any issues now talking about financing now i looked at a ton of tractors right well not a ton there's not a whole lot of them out there this size but the reason why i went with kubota well their financing was amazing i was able to finance this tractor for four years at like a 0.9 percent financing with no money down and they gave you money on top of it for implements. Now, I wound up buying a front plow, spending all my money on the front plow, and people would say, well, Mike, they just hide that cost and the price of the tractor. Well, I've been watching these tractors a long time. If they're hiding it, they've been hiding it for a long time. So that was the plus side. Their financing was amazing. Now, I went to John Deere, and they had some 0% financing for so many years, and then they want so much money down. It's not a big deal. Put some money down, responsible person purchasing something they'd obviously put money down they don't want to pay all the interest me hey when somebody's giving practically free money away i'm going to take it now with my tractor this is the money maker right here the front end loader and there's plenty of videos on how you can take this thing on and off by just sitting in the cab of your tractor and there are no lies they it is simple guys there's one thing you need to know don't ever attempt to take this front blade off if you're sitting on uneven ground i'm telling you right now it will be an absolute nightmare to get it back on lined up on your tractor pivot points because if you're even if you're on an uneven piece of concrete those pivot points need to be completely flat or they won't lock down into place and you'll wind up half installing this and finding somewhere level to get installed properly and you risk damaging the front end of your tractor or this front end loader uh quick disconnect like i said there's this tractor front end loader it's money the way they designed it everything about it i love it they utilize the skid steer front end on it so you just pull these levers off and you can put any attachment you want on here they'll just clamp back down john deere i don't know if they're offering that yet but when i had to replace the bucket on a john deere tractor at work I had to buy a John Deere bucket. I couldn't buy any skid steer type of bucket that would clamp down on it without buying an, an additional adapter that costs just as much as the bucket. So definitely an upside with these tractors. I think a lot of people are going to this method because it is extremely universal. So good on you, Kubota. I really like this. I hope other people follow. I think John Deere is the only one that's still lagging behind when it comes to this option. It's kind of dark, so bear with me. The front end plow on this, also very easy to install and take off, no problems at all. This thing, sorry, my neighbor's mowing up top, but 
one pin, two little latch points, and it comes on and off. Extremely user friendly. So when it's snowing outside and you don't want to run this on your tractor all the time, it's very easy to pop it on and off. Here's something that is going to be a little hard to chew for some of you guys out there and girls. It's just a tractor, people. People are really defensive about tractors, and I don't understand. It's almost like Chevy and Fords and Toyotas, and people are just married to a brand. And I get a lot of flack from people who have other branded tractors about me buying this. I mean, straight up rude comments. And I don't understand it, people. Anything from the, the color, the brand, the size, the fact that it shouldn't be called a tractor. I'm sorry. This thing's a lawnmower on steroids. It's got a front end loader. It's got a PTO. It's got a three point in the back. Diesel engine that's well powered. But y'all, y'all get crazy on these tractors, man. I'll tell you what, this motor in this thing is a Yammer motor. John Deere's been putting these motors in their tractors of this size for years, ever since like the early 90s. And the motors are indestructible. They're tough, great, great motors. And besides the color and the options, the tractors are almost all the same. People say, ah, oh, it's, it's the service, it's this and that, dude everyone's different you might have a dealership that's awesome you might have a dealership that really sucks i kind of got one of those but it's not throwing me off from the kubota i think they got a good reputation and the fact that they take all their uh complaints that people have about little stupid little things like the front end guard or where the controls are at and they make changes that really says a lot i think so guys chill out if you're comp compensating for something do take it up with somebody else I bought this tractor for its size. I literally bought it for this size. I needed a tractor that I could use on my acreage that could hold up to the things I needed to do. I'm not going to go buy a giant tractor for that, for those duties. I need something that could cut my yard, haul mulch and rock around, fix my driveway, till gardens, and everything underneath the sun. This provides it. So that's why I have this size tractor. And if you guys can't deal with that, I'm sorry. It's what I needed, and it was in my price range. Well, guys, that's all I have today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, let them down in the comments, and people who are freaking out about what I said or how I cut my grass, man, bring it. I'm ready for you. Like I said, I'm new to this tractor community. I wanted to give my opinion on something that a lot of people are on the fence about, this, that, tires, attachments. We didn't really go in depth. That's why I said this was a light review. I got 22 hours on this tractor, and there is more to come. I'm sure it's gonna, some more things are gonna raise its head about things I like or dislike about this tractor. They'll be coming in an upcoming video. So I hope you subscribe. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. And I'll see you on the next episode of Sunny Slope Homestead. Thanks, guys.